on show 479, more electric Jaguar E-Types, a hybrid Land Rover Defender, an old versus new. Those stories, and actually many, many more on today's podcast. Not sure why, but it's been an abundance of news today, so I'll crack straight on, and thank you very much for listening wherever you are in the world. So whether it's a, a, a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening, I don't know what time of day it is where you're listening, or what you're doing. Maybe at the gym, on your drive, on your commute, listening while you do something else. Maybe it's the part of your routine every single day. If you want to listen every day, at least you know there's always going to be an EV News Daily to listen to for today's edition, Wednesday 22nd of May. If you're new, my name is Martin. Thank you for listening. I go through every EV story that I can find. I try and save you time, and hopefully it's time well spent. We try and keep it under 20 minutes. You know, under 15 is a good day, and it's hopefully a good use of your very busy time. A great use of your time is to check out myev.com, myev.com. It's the world's first marketplace about buying and selling and learning about EVs. USA only at the moment. I would love, I would love to have something like that here in the UK. My goodness me, if you're lucky enough to have myev, make the make the most of it. We'll start with a new a bit of kind of leaked intel by someone who, if you follow them on Twitter. Their name is Simply Green, by the way. Then they're always posting stuff about things they've uncovered from the code. Almost a year since the announcement from Elon Musk about a Keep Climate On feature for party animals and campers. Now we've got news about a Tesla hacker who goes by the name Simply of Green. He's released a screenshot showing the new party mode button has been added to the climate options. Now, I'm guessing by the time you listen to this, There's not been an update, and if you go into your climate options of your Tesla, you won't see party mode yet. But you may do soon, reports exautoworld.com today. Well, YouTuber Bjorn Nyland has already been testing the camper mode, the keep climate on version, in extreme winter temperatures of minus 15 degrees C, where he makes his videos in Norway. He was able to sleep inside his Tesla Model X. However, the keep climate on option actually turns the car off, and for most of its functions, they get shut down, maybe apart from heating and cooling to keep the, the cabin warm or cool. But party mode, it seems, party mode is all about keeping the car, while it's parked and turned off, still operational. Center touchscreen, ambient lighting, USB ports, the outlet, so you can have your speakers blaring, maybe some power as well, and that is called party mode. A bit like dog mode, uh, the climate stays on, and they are going to be rolling that out, you would think, soon. If it's been uncovered in the code, can't be far away. By the way, your battery needs to be at 20% or more, I think, for that party mode to work. I'll put a link to X Auto World in the show notes. And we go green is how every Formula E race starts. And We Go Green is the name of a new documentary made by Leonardo DiCaprio, all about the electric street racing. It's going to have its world debut tomorrow at the Cannes Film Festival, Variety has learned. That's according to Brett Lang for Variety.com. The behind-the-scenes look at the ABB, FIA, Formula E Championship chronicles how the groundbreaking electric car racing series has really matured from an upstart championship to the world's fastest-growing motorsport in four short years. In addition to offering compelling racing footage, the documentary and We Go Green also dovetails with Leonardo DiCaprio's interest in combating global warming and air pollution. It's going to be screening tomorrow, like I say, at Cannes. In addition to the filmmakers, the producers, DiCaprio is going to be there alongside the Formula E founder, the CEO, general legend that is Alejandro Agag, uh, one of the guys I would very much like to meet him, even if it's a, a you know a passing handshake, a quick selfie, a 30-second chat somewhere. He seems like a fascinating guy to meet, right? Uh, Formula E driver Nelson Piquet Jr. is going to be there, the reigning champ Jean-Éric Verne, so Jeff will be on hand, and the Formula E drivers Sam Bird, Lucas Degrassi, and Andre Lotterer. And we will look out to see that. There's a two-minute trailer. I'll put a link in the show notes if you want to have a look. Looks really, really good, by the way. Now, there's an Irish company in a place called Wicklow. They're called Electrify, and they have made quite a splash by revealing they have converted a classic Ferrari 308 to electric power. Now, if you know a Ferrari lover in your life, how long before they add an electric-powered Ferrari? Or maybe they never will. Maybe they like the, 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 the sounds and the smells of combustion engine. Who knows? Uh, they've announced, though, a deal to build a series of electric Jaguar E-types now, says the Irish Times. The cars are going to keep their original structure, 
but the 3.8 and the 4.2 straight six engines and the four speed MOS gearbox are going to be removed. The battery pack and the electric motor are going to slot into the space vacated by all the old oily bits. And in theory, it's going to be simple to restore the car back to petrol power. If you ever want to bring it back to its original status, they're not going to do anything that can't be reversed. Power is going to be about 450 brake horsepower. Holy moly, that is an insane amount of power in what's a pretty small car. Uh, 0-62 in 4 seconds. Top speed, 280 kilometers an hour. No figure yet for the total range, but you know what? You don't need to worry about it, because I'm guessing you probably can't afford one in the hundreds of thousands of pounds if you want to buy one of these. Jaguar itself, though, has its own E-Type plans for battery-powered cars. The electric E-Type, or E-Type Zero, is its full name. Already made a big splash a year ago, thanks to a cameo role in the Royal Wedding, and they are going to be making those as well. Uh, and Jaguar, at the moment, Jaguar Land Rover needs all the help it can get because they're having a really tough time financially. And it could be one of the reasons why we see Jaguar Land Rover, one of the fir first really big car makers to pivot completely to electric power, almost in a bid to save itself. Like I say, the financials, are the losses are in the billions of dollars. It's super bad news there at the moment, but maybe, maybe electrification can save that brand. Jaguar Land Rover is testing a hybrid version of its upcoming Defender. Now, they've got Range Rovers out there, but the Defender, that's the rugged off-road. You see them all the time here in the UK on farms, on country back roads, and yes, dropping dropping the little kids off at school because, you know, you need a, an off-roader to do that, don't you? Spy photographers have caught a prototype on public roads outside Jaguar's Research and Development Centre in Gaydon here in England. A look at the vehicle's registration records shows the powertrain as being a hybrid system. According to Trucks.com, Land Rover's going to debut its reborn Defender later this year after a 22-year hiatus. The Land Rover Defender is coming back to the US as a modernised successor to the rugged original. Among the possible changes now, it looks like alternative powertrains. But what kind of hybrid is it? Jaguar Land Rover offers a mild hybrid Evoque, the Range Rover Evoque, a plug-in hybrid Range Rover and Range Rover Sport, and the all-electric I-Pace. So what's going to be in the Defender? We know it's electrified from the registration documents and we just don't know what kind of hybrid powertrain it could be. Maybe just a mild hybrid system that uses some regen and controls. Possibly, you know, when you're going down those kind of 45 degree slopes doing some off-roading and you need all of that, that control. Maybe a little battery electric motor in there can help do some of that torque shifting for you. Some regen down the hills as well. Electric motors are really good for instant torque as well. Exactly what off-road ne vehicles need. Moving on to Ford next. And Ford Motor Company is planning to eliminate 7,000 salary jobs around the world by the end of the summer in August as part of their Smart Redesign program, according to an email sent to employees and published by Automotive News Today. It says Market Watch. Now, whilst The Guardian says this, the cuts are expected to save Ford $600 million a year or £471 million a year. They want to improve their profit margin as car makers all around the world manage weaker global demand and they're readying themselves for a period of upheaval and they're putting it all down to the oncoming shift to electric vehicles. All these big legacy automakers like Ford are struggling with how do we carry on making cars that we're really good at making but also pivot to electric cars and what's the speed they do it as well. It's fascinating to watch. And where do those batteries come from that go in all the EVs and how are the batteries made? Let's talk minerals. BHP. A uh, big mining company. BHP have lifted its forecasts on the adoption of EVs all around the world, a phenomenon that will have substantial ramifications for the world's biggest mining company. Well, BHP now estimates at least 132 million EVs on the roads by 2035, at least 561 million by the middle of the century. How do they put these numbers together? Like forecasting so far out in advance, but they have done, and they're very optimistic now on EVs. The numbers are this case a low case forecast, they say. They're be they think they're being pessimistic. It's also suggested that take-up could be a lot, lot higher. And I think I would agree with that. Once we reach the tipping point, it's going to be no looking back. There will be a point where EVs are cheaper, go farther, have better performance, are nicer to drive than ICE cars. And when the cost comes down and the range goes up, and we're not far away, we're a few short years 
why would you buy an ice car apart from as your weekend hobby car? And what's wrong with that? Because what's wrong with having a burger every so often? Just don't have one for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Do you know what I mean? Everything in moderation. If you want to go racing at the weekend, one little get a weekend project, a garage project, maybe something classic that you get out on a, on a sunny day. Hey, maybe that's how the future of fossil cars is going to go, possibly. Well, the Sydney Morning Herald says that BHP is watching the development of the EV market closely, given its activities around the world. It has significant copper and nickel operations, two commodities that are essential to EV batteries. It also has significant oil operations and said it sees continued demand for that commodity. The company signalled its optimism in the growth of EVs last week when it also confirmed it would retain its Nickel West business, with Chief Exec Andrew McKenzie citing the potential growth in the business because of the expected growth in battery markets. I'll put a link in the article in the show notes to that article if you want to read even more. Well, should you skip all of these newfangled EVs and simply go for tried and true and well-tested, maybe a used Tesla? That's the question being asked by InsideEVs.com today. The new Audi e-tron is the culmination of four years of R&D and represents one of the most expensive projects in Audi's entire history as a car maker. Nonetheless, the battery specs don't rival those of the cars that have been coming out of Fremont for many years now. In absolute terms, Audi's new e-tron range is below that of the very, very oldest Model S. When you look at the miles of range per kilowatt hour of battery size, the comparison gets even more lopsided. In 2012, back in 2012, the EPA range of the Model S that came with a 60 kilowatt hour pack was 208 miles. And as you may well know, compared to that 208 miles, if you buy the very, very latest Audi e-tron, it's got 204 miles. We had seven years of development and a ton more money and you get less range by four miles. And that is with a 95 kilowatt hour pack. A seven year old Model S with a battery pack of a similar size. So if you go for an 85 kilowatt hour pack, and I'm, I'm doing that because the usable energy in the Audi e-tron is a lot less. But if you go for an 85 kilowatt hour pack in the Model S, which is about what you've got usable in the e-tron, you're gonna get 265 miles compared to the 204 miles on the e-tron. Meanwhile, a Model X, you could argue that's a bigger car, more in line with the Audi e-tron uh, market. That gets 250 miles from just a 75 kilowatt hour pack. The Model 3, if you look at the Model 3 Standard Range Plus, it gets 240 miles from just 55 kilowatt hours. And all of that in comparison to the Audi e-tron, it's not great. But of course, Audi are trying to play up their fast charging capabilities and actually having lots of room, headroom at the top and battery pack at the bottom end, reserved that you can't use, but they reserve it for efficiency, lifetime usage, charging speed. They reckon that's the way to go. Personally, I've said it before on the podcast, long-time listeners hear me say it all the time, range, range, range. Give me the pack, let me use the total amount. If it's best not to charge to 100%, tell me, and I'll charge to 80, nine times out of 10. And then when I go on a long road trip, I want to charge to 100 i'll take the risk that it hurts the battery pack you know one in a once in a blue moon i'll go all the way down to zero go all the way up to 100 but i am happy to manage that i'm like i'm an ev geek right maybe out are taking the the thoughts that you know what you know what actually the kind of person that's going to buy our car will manage the battery for them different way different ways of doing it well, let's talk about bmw next and the bmw i8 it's a stylish futuristic looking plug-in hybrid i went past one today actually there is a car dealer at the end of my road i wouldn't say like top end but they have like there's some nice cars on their lot okay and they've got an out i8 out the front it's a sunny day here in the uk so i can see why they took the roof off of that or uh, whatever they were doing and putting it at the front of the the uh, the forecourt a new report today suggests the second generation model of the BMW i8 could well be going fully electric with the current car with a turbocharged 1.5 litre. It's a three cylinder engine actually in the i3 in the i3 in the i8. Uh, it's got an internal combustion engine, but it's got an electric motor and a good sized battery pack. 11.6 kilowatt hours in the BMW i8, but the successor, according to CarScoops.com, could well be all electric. Sources told the publication that the switch to an all-EV powertrain would provide a very tangible link 
to what BMW are doing in Formula E and their motor racing ambitions as well. Understandable, it would likely help to serve as a halo model for the upcoming slate of electric vehicles. I'll pop a link to carscoops.com in the show notes if you want to read more. And staying with BMW, because why not? Two more stories. BMW has announced a major refresh of its lineup today, including pu- a plug in hybrid version of several models scheduled for this summer in 2019. In effect, all plug in hybrids are going to be equipped with a brand new, higher energy dense battery for longer all electric range, reports insideevs.com today. The upgraded versions of the plug ins come just in time to. Uh, not harm the severely uh, the, the plug-in sales results, which uh, didn't bring any growth for the past few months for BMW. Uh, the list of updated plug-ins from July and August onwards in the US this summer include these. And beware, because BMW are not ones for providing short car names. Check out the plug-in hybrids coming to the US, which are going to be updated this summer. The BMW 330e i Performance. The BMW 530e i Performance, the BMW 530e X-Drive i Performance, it gets longer, the BMW X5 X-Drive 45e i Performance, the BMW 225 XE Active Tourer i Performance, and finally, the relatively brief BMW 745e i Performance. They like their long names, don't they? Right, final story today. And Addison Lee, which is a cab company here in the UK. They must be feeling the heat from the likes of Uber. But Addison Lee, you see them all the time in London when I'm up there working. And I'm working from home today, by the way, in case you are wondering. And had no meetings, booked in the diary. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to save the drive to London. I've been doing emails and calls with the US today uh, if you're interested by the way uh, not that I, I guess you are let's talk about cars a little bit more Addison Lee has unveiled the capital's first all-electric minicab in a boost for efforts uh, taxi tackling toxic fumes in London Addison Lee is trialing the new you guessed it 70,000 pound Audi e-tron they're going to test them for six months to assess the practicality of the vehicle which this uh, article in the newspaper called Evening Standard says the Audi e-tron which comes with 250 miles of range Um, who knows I don't know what uh, I need to go and look at the Audi website because I haven't memorised you know shock horror the WLTP uh, official Audi e-tron here in Europe distance let alone real world range by the way one of my uh, buddies who uh, kind of met on socials and have since met and uh, and actually someone who I'm looking forward to meeting that would be Chris and Scott looking forward to meeting Scott never met him but Chris Ramsey from Plug-in Adventure Chris and Scott are doing a bit of a road trip over the next few days to Germany in an Audi e-tron so I'm going to be following them on Twitter maybe you'll want to follow them on the Twitters if you're listening to this soon after publication to see the real world range of what they're getting out of the e-tron and we'll see what Addison Lee make of it as well I'll pop a link to the e standard newspaper in the show notes right if you want to take part in this week's question of the week i would love to hear from you it is this does the location of production influence your buying decision yes no tell me why though does the location of where your car is made influence your buying decision thank you as always to myev.com for setting our question of the week Okay, time for the endy bit. Well, there are 212 patrons of the podcast. What's a patron? Well, it's a website called Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash EV News Daily. And it's how you can support your favourite creators. Or, if you want to, just enjoy this show for free, because there's absolutely no pressure. Well, there are 478 previous shows online. Wow, we're edging close to show 500. And if you want to get any of them for free or the new ones for free, I would love you to subscribe. We put the audio on YouTube and all the main podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. Uh, please do subscribe so you get the shows automatically, first and free. In the meantime, come and say hi on the socials by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. And always remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. <laughs>